Market is, is not efficient, uh, and fundamentals cannot counter surges in emotions. With me now, David Bonson. All right, David, essentially, you know, I think the stock market is not efficient. That's my opinion on it. And I think that's what makes it really hard for folks to make money in it and to survive these sort of periods. Your thoughts? Well, I think the way I choose to phrase it is that markets are incredibly efficient at times and incredibly inefficient at other times. And we don't always know what times are what. So therefore, you have to assume at given points of time, it's inefficient. Uh, human emotions are very inefficient too, Charles. And that's where you get not just computers, not just algorithms, flows, technicals. You also get people that become too greedy at times of euphoria, mm -hmm. and they become too panicked in times of fear. Are you, uh, do you think that pendulum is in a narrow, narrow range these days? You know, it feels like one day there's extreme optimism and, and maybe people have gotten spoiled, but we get a, a couple down days and it's like the end of the world. Well, people have gotten spoiled, but there, there's a problem with that is that it leads to behavioral issues that are self-fulfilling prophecies. Because they're accustomed to low volatility, then they, it creates more volatility when that uh, trajectory reverses. Last year, we had five or six times the market was down 3%. It lasted two days mm. most of the time. Yeah. And yet, unfortunately, a lot of people got whipsawed around. You know, Charles, I don't use the word trade. We don't consider ourselves traders. I know some people do. We want to be investors in companies. That helps mute a lot of that volatility. Absolutely. And I think that's the reason I'm having this conversation with you. By the way, a lot of people who call themselves investors uh, turn into traders when the stock goes against them, uh, which is a problem. That's right. Hey, let's talk about oil. It's spiking here. Uh, of course, uh, you were long. Got to give you props. You were long this trade before it became the cool trade. Now, and I thought it was interesting because one of the things that you told me early on was that uh, the destruction of the supply destruction that would come from this administration and all of the things that they would do against, you know, fossil fuels. Do you consider that? Is that would that be considered fundamental research that gives you that long term onus to ride these waves? Very much so. And it's fundamental research. And it's also contrarian because people think, oh, this administration's against oil, therefore oil goes down. But sometimes when you're talking about supply and demand factors, it can work the other way. The most energy friendly administration of my life was the Trump administration. And energy was the worst performing <laughs> sector. The most opposed to energy is the Biden administration. And it was the number one performing sector last year. Now, you haven't been a fan of all the fantasy stuff, you know, uh, all the gee whiz, how you get, you know, next world kind of out of world stuff. And they've been melting down pretty, pretty big. Uh, I mean, is there more downside there or, you know, because you got people now tempted to sift through those ashes? Charles, we are all victims of the era in which we learned how to manage money. And anyone who went through Munder, Net, Net and Pets.com would be afraid of these things the way I am, too. And right now, the meme stuff, the fantasy stuff, the shiny object things that we're calling it, um, there is no way people can say it's reached a bottom because when you talk about fundamentals, there aren't fundamentals to price a lot of these things on. And so we are naturally skeptical of things that their investment appeal is nothing more than other people's popularity assessment. So I do not feel that these trades have ended. The NASDAQ's only down six or 7%. Mm -hmm. And yet the average stock in the NASDAQ, there's 40% of them are down in half. Yeah. And so there's could theoretically be a lot more room to go here. Hey, David, uh, happy new year, my friend. Great stuff. You've always been a major asset to this show. I appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you, Charles. Happy new year, my friend. See you soon.